Hi, I'm David Cook. I am the clarinet professor at Millikan University, and today we're going to be talking about etude number nine from the 21 Foundation Studies for Alto or Bass Clarinet. One of the important things with this etude is to begin by practicing with the metronome set on the eighth note. Now we're marked in 6-8, but it says allegro non troppo, so we'll probably be thinking of this in two, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But when we're learning this, make sure you're thinking about the eighth note and keeping the metronome on that to help us with our evenness. So if this is our eighth note, Begin by practicing that way, and as you gradually increase your tempo, leave that eighth note on until you get to a point where it feels very comfortably like it's in two. That's a really helpful way to make sure we're maintaining even rhythm in all of these 16th notes. Another helpful practice technique is to practice this all slurred. We have a lot of articulated notes in here, but we want to make sure we have enough air support behind that articulation. So start by practicing. And once you feel more comfortable and you're hearing every note of the bass clarinet speak with the same resonance and tone quality, then begin your articulation. You'll probably notice that all of the articulation in this is always the same pattern of three slurred sixteenths followed by three articulated sixteenths. Don't try and make the staccato too short. Just make sure they're separated from the notes on either side of them. You've probably also noticed that there aren't really places to take a breath in this etude, so we have to strategically plan where we're going to breathe. Look at the phrases and the harmony and figure out what makes the most sense to, as far as a breathing location, and then try and take those breaths as quickly as possible, instead of... That really interrupts the phrase and the direction of the music. So if we can try and sneak those in. It helps the character of the music and the momentum continue on through the breath mark. In addition, make sure you follow all the dynamic markings. The rhythm is very repetitive, so we need to make sure we're doing something interesting with our dynamics. We start piano, we come all the way up to forte at measure 19, and we end quite softly, so there's sort of an arc trajectory throughout this etude. And that's really helpful for us and for the listener to create a musical experience for them. The last thing I want to talk about in this is at measure 21, we go back and forth between C and E flat, the third space C to the fourth space E flat. And depending on your bass clarinet, you may or may not have a key right here that helps you go back and forth between those. What we want to avoid doing is going is trying to play the C and the E flat both on the right because we'll never be able to move quickly enough to do that. It's very awkward to try. So if you if you have this key, play your C on your right and the E flat on your left. Or if you don't have that key or if you do have this one and just feel more comfortable with the next approach I'm going to talk about, you can play the C on the left. Don't try and 
to slide your finger between both keys. Your pinky should be alternating between left and right in that passage. A similar thing comes up in measures 23 and 24, so I encourage you to practice both of those spots with alternating pinkies. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this or would like to know about taking a lesson with me, please email me at dcook at millikan.edu. Thanks for listening again, and happy practicing. Uh-huh.